to today's webinar, Build and File Sync Document Management 101, Simplify, Simplify File Sharing. This webinar is brought to you by Graytech. My name is Misty Scott, and I am pleased to be your moderator today. As a reminder, you can find a schedule of upcoming events, webinars, and training on our calendar at asti.com calendar. I'm very pleased to introduce our expert today. Aaron Hall is an implementation consultant at Gray Tech with over six years of experience in mechanical and residential construction. Aaron brings hands-on expertise with industry-leading tools like Bluebeam, Revit, AutoCAD, ACS, and now Gray Tech FileSync. Thank you so much for joining us today, Aaron, and I'm going to turn it on over to you. Oh, thank you, Misty. Welcome, everybody. Let's go ahead and get started. So we're going to cover um, Autodesk Build and File Sync Document Management. So this is kind of a wide topic. Um, we're going to start off with going through uh, File Sync. So what's it do? How do I set it up? And how do I simply, um, you know, get it going for my company? So I'm going to have a couple different perspectives on this. So um, hopefully it'll be valuable to you. All right. The first thing about File Sync is we can use it to easily migrate and transfer data between projects, between platforms, from on-premises servers to uh, cloud-based um, Autodesk Construction Cloud or Procore or even uh, SharePoint or Dropbox, something like that. So it may, the best thing that I've found with FileSync is just the simplicity and um, the easeability of use. So I've used a lot of sync tools um, to do very similar tasks. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about them. So um, before we go any further, um, Missy said I've worked for a MEP union mechanical contractor for three years. Um, it's a very small company. Um, I worked specifically on fabrication database, which is a very data heavy, um, you know, backups are required constantly. So coming from that background, it was a very small company. We had on-site servers. And it was just before, you know, the real big push for Procore and cloud-based um, construction management tools. So it, that was one of the, the pain points that we were um, struggling with was transferring from on-site servers to the cloud and how to do that. And how do we handle backups? Um, for instance, I remember, you know, if somebody actually accidentally deleted a file from our um from our server, we had to go back and hope that it hadn't been, hadn't been seven days uh, since the last backup of our server. And if it had, it was too bad, it was gone. Um, so in today's construction world, we're trying to reduce that and simplify uh, the process for either doing updates or backing up our data. And that's gonna be important for any, any client that's using um, or storing their data in the cloud. So, Without further ado, here's some of the, the common um, company types that are going to be using um, a tool such as FileSync. Construction, architecture, engineering, manufacturing, all can benefit from using FileSync. Um, I'm going to run through my favorite parts of FileSync, things I like about it, things that are different from other platforms that you can use. Uh, but all of these, these firms need to uh, have a good process for um, backing up their data. Okay, this diagram, I'm not going to spend too much time on this slide. This diagram shows all of the different applications that can uh, you can use with either ACC and from very different types of, uh, we have mixed reality, document management, uh, data analytics, work, workforce calibration. There's tons of apps, um, and hopefully you guys have used more of these than I have. I've used a handful. Uh, some of them are really good. You see Raken on there. Um, Let's see, the wild, uh, just a handful. So being able to take this data and integrate it into your, your projects is something that ACC is really good at. Um, okay. There we go. Okay, industry challenges. So here's some statistics. 54% um, of construction projects experience delays due to poor data integration. Um, you know, it's a, it's a huge number. Now, there's also 52% of construction professionals cite a lack of real-time data as a major hurdle to effective decisions. Now, um, 
file sync is going to also help increase this last number here, 20%, the average decrease in productivity resulting from inefficient data and file collaboration. So just having a plan for how you're going to back up your data and where documentation is going to go is going to make your firm more efficient um, by 20%. That, that the number is huge. So why file sync? So file sync offers a wide variety of benefits. The very first thing is backup. I'm going to run you through how to how to backup your your uh, data from any one of the the platforms. Again, that's going to be ACC, uh, BIM 360, Procore, uh, SharePoint. Even we can back all of those up from e any one of those, and uh, it's going to be one of the the best things about FileSync is the backup. Now along the same lines you can migrate data between those those platforms. So this is one of the, there's other ways that you can do this. It's very manual. Um, a lot of you, if you've used um, the Autodesk desktop connector or, um, you know, even Dropbox desktop, you know, to store data, you can actually move things between platforms manually. Well, the best thing about using FileSync is this simplifies the process. You can automate it, you can schedule it, um, it really simplifies everything. And I'm going to touch on that a few more times today, how, how simple file sync is to set up and use. Um, the collaboration, if you need to, being able to share documents between project types and lo, uh, folder locations, that's really important for getting everybody within your project access to the files and, and folders that they need access to. So um, again, you can cross platforms back and forth, um, share files, um, in a lot of different ways, include different file types, um, filter out different data that doesn't need to be needed. There's a lot of things we can do. And the last one is compliance. Now, um, oh, let me go back here. So here, here's a slide I'll just go through. I'm going to go down to compliance first. Compliance. We can ensure teams are working to industry-specific standards. We can demonstrate adherence to regulatory requirements using logs and um, uh, activity logs. We can also control file access and sharing, which also kind of talks to the compliance factor. Now I'm going to go back here to um, backup since we were just talking about that first. Managing backups across a multitude of diverse data sets. Uh, we can manual manual processes and increase risk of data loss. File sync automates backups. Again, that's um, really nice. We can schedule it on, you know, it doesn't have to be a manual schedule. We can, I prefer to run manual um, backups, but uh, being able to schedule these topics or schedule backups, you know, to run uh, 2 a.m. in the middle of, you know, Saturday night or something like that um, is really beneficial. Again, the migration or migrating data between platforms. Um, again, you can do this with other tools. You can, there's a there are a multitude of tools that will let, allow you to do this. The, the most important thing about file sync is it allows anybody, anybody within your team to quickly grasp how it's set up and how to get using it. Um, that's one of the big things. I'm going to kind of jump to that real quick. The big things I see um, coming from kind of a, a data management background, whether it was fabrication database or, um, you know, project ACC um, data, just backing up a project data, is we tend to get over ambitious with the complexity of setup of either whether it's backups or just sharing or um, you know, naming convention even. Uh, we get, you know, try to make things as nice and as advanced as we can, but sometimes it overcomplicates. And a big thing about it is you, you can – you can make big changes and make things very complicated and it might work great, but say you have somebody that's out of the office and they don't know how it works. They need to be able to come in and quickly be able to see how things are set up and kind of see it in their head without having to, you know, spend two weeks studying a course to understand it. That's one of the big things that I, one of the big um, things we have to overcome as, as companies when we're, um, implementing new software is don't get overly ambitious. Take it a step at a time, small chunks. Uh, simplic simplicity is not a bad thing. It's, it's a good thing. We just have to, you know, leverage it smartly. So um, 
again, that's one of the things I'm going to harp on today, really, and hopefully it's not harping, but uh, one of the strengths I see in FileSync. So here, this, this slide displays the different platforms that we can sync between, whether it's Autodesk Docs and ACC, Autodesk Construction Cloud, or syncing to the older version from BIM 360. You can share documents between them um, using this platform. Uh, you can also synchronize files from Procore and SharePoint, OneDrive, Windows, Dropbox, any, any platform that supports file sharing between uh, Windows file structure, um, we can synchronize. So that's really nice. And I'm going to demonstrate some of those here, just setting up a few of them. Um, some additional benefits. This slide highlights the benefits of using Graytech file sync solutions. Um, connected systems, first one. Platform integrates various systems, ensuring seamless data flow and connectivity between tools, reducing manual data entry and risk of errors. Um, any Anytime we can automate something, the best thing that you can do is automate it. Um, because that's going to reduce the amount of manual errors we get. There's so many manual errors you can't even think about. I, mean, I see that a lot when you're setting up build projects, and I'll kind of talk, talk to the build Autodesk build side here uh, in a few minutes. But um, anything you can automate is, is going to be beneficial. Uh, process automation by automating repetitive tasks and system allows teams to focus on more strategic activities. So instead of having to focus on when a file is being backed up, we can focus our time on either more innovative uh, things or learning other tasks um, or systems beyond just you know, creating backups. Nobody wants to just create backups all day. Uh, collaboration. Um, the solution enhances the collaboration by enabling real-time data sharing across data sources, ensuring everyone is working with the latest information. So it keeps everybody on the same page. There is version supported between um, now, it is not supported with Windows. Windows doesn't uh, support versioning of files, but um, BIM 360 and ACC does. So um, you can leverage that to see every version of a file that you have. And then the compliance factor, again, it simplifies compliance by providing tools to track and manage regulatory requirements, helping teams stay compliant with ind industry standards and avoid costly penalties. So now, examples of file sync. I'm gonna go through just a few examples and I'll actually bring up my screen here and display some for you. So the first one is we can migrate data from SharePoint to Docs, Autodesk Docs. Uh, we can run this after hours. We can sync new and modified files from SharePoint. You know, we can um, have uh, files that are removed from SharePoint, deleted from Docs automatically. That's, a really quick toggle, and I'll show you that uh, in file sync here. Another version or another way that you can use file sync is to collaborate from Procore to Docs. So again, we can copy files um, with versioning over from Procore to Autodesk Docs, whether that's a you know a project or even um, you know BIM 360 project. We can sync that over scheduled or you know on, on the fly. We can automatically sync new and modified files. There's a lot of filtering that we can do to filter out specific files like hidden files or system files we can filter out. We can also filter out specific file types. So if you want to filter out your Revit models, you want to filter out, um, I can think of a lot of different file types that uh, you might want to filter out. Uh, we can do that very easily. Stakeholders require versioning visibility for tracking changes. Again, versioning, we can we get that versioning from Procore. So um, as long as you're not going to a Windows, Windows-based platform like um, Dropbox or something like that, the versioning is not supported directly on Windows. So then the next thing, a very simple one is backing up from docs to your C drive or to your Windows either uh, server or your own personal PC. Now, this one's pretty straightforward. I'm gonna show you how I have mine set up. We can, again, filter any unnecessary files from the backup. Um, we can also ensure directory relates the current cloud project structure. So I'm gonna come back to the project structure here uh, and talk about it a little more in, in detail. Okay. Um, okay, so here's all the use cases that you can 
C for file sync. So it connects all of our different platforms, whether it's BIM 360, uh, ACC, Procore, uh, BIM 360, or SharePoint. Uh, it connects all of them, lets you move data back and forth, selecting what files and folders you want to include and not include. Um, and it's very easy and, and simple to set up. Now, I've used other sync tools, such as um, if I have any MEP people in the house, um, FabSync. Um, FabSync was a product that Applied Software has uh, used in the past. I used it as a contractor for a long time. It has a lot of similarity to the um, the setup and simplicity that FileSync has. And that's the very first thing I noticed about it is um, how, how simple it is. Anybody can get in and understand how it works. And that's really important, especially when you're a smaller company and, and trying to get everybody on board with something. If you can show them how to use it and explain it to them where they understand what's going on, it helps everybody out. You're more likely to get backing um, from, you know, management to implement a change like that. It also makes it easier to um, show others how to set it up. So that's the very first thing I noticed. And I think it's one of the, the very most important things about FileSync. Now I'm going to bring up FileSync real quick. Let's see here. Okay. So this is the FileSync window. Again, it's very simple. It's the very first thing. Now this menu bar, um, this menu pane, actually, it's called the menu pane. Over on the left, you'll see connections, projects, activity logs, and uh, activity and logs. So the connections panel is going to um, have every one of your uh, platforms listed. So if you're connecting to Procore, you're going to have Procore on here. Right now, I have OneDrive, BIM 360, and ACC, Autodesk Construction Cloud, all uh, set up in file sync. Now, this gives you access to um, just the platform. So for each one, again, OneDrive, M360, ACC, we have this connection created already. Now, I'm not going to go through how to create it. It's pretty simple. You cr uh, click the Create Connection button. We also had a webinar on, on how to actually set these connections up. It's pretty straightforward. You follow the prompts. Um, you'll get some email notifications and you'll you'll be in. What I'm going to show you next, the projects tab. This is where the um, rubber meets the road. This is where we create the projects that we want to sync to. So you see it's broken out. Um, this is going to be the main pane. And this window is going to have projects in the top followed by syncs. So you can think of syncs as being a, a sub folder to the project. So within Aaron's test project here, I have these three syncs set up. So that's one of the, probably the most confusing thing that when I started using this, I'm like, why do we have projects and syncs? I think you can have multiple projects, but each project is going to have its own list of sync, syncs that you can do. So you can go in, you can schedule the entire project to run. You see here we have three syncs. Uh, you do have a disable button. I actually am a fan of that. If you want to make sure it's off, you go ahead and check mark it there. It's very easy to understand. Um, this little play button lets you start the sync. Now you can, if you click on settings here, this is where you can schedule. You can put in a, you know, further description. Uh, you can add company information um, to the project. Uh, if you click on schedule here, we can turn on, you know, if we want to run Monday at um, 6 p.m. We can set that here. Well, didn't quite get it. Oh, you have to check mark it. Try this again. There we go. And then you can run uh, run interval. So um, if you want to run every 24 hours, you can do that, or you can just leave this set to 15 minutes and hit OK. And it tells you run on. Monday at 6 p.m. every 15 minutes. Now, that's a bit overkill. Uh, maybe you want to do that, set that up a little bit differently, but you can schedule these um, to run. Now, at the bottom here, you see I have three different syncs set up for this project. Very first one, and I'm actually going to run this for you. This is going to take my Autodesk build project. I'm going to try to show this to you on my screen. Let me know, guys, if you end up not being able to see this. Okay, so this is my test project. This is a 
project that I've set up. It has a folder structure in here. I'm going to talk a little bit more about folder structures here uh, if we don't run out of time. Now, within this project, I'm going to synchronize one of these folders. Now, I'm actually going to sync everything here. So I have everything set up to sync. So what's that mean? This very first top bar, uh, this sync bar says Autodesk build. I'm going to sync from one project to OneDrive. So I'm going to sync all of my project documents from the file section in my build ACC project down to um, my OneDrive account. So I actually went in and I set this up earlier. I clicked settings. I chose a, a you know, specific uh, a project that I want to sync from. I selected all of my project files. So Aaron's test project, any folder in there, it's going to include all of my, my folders. I did include subfolders, so I made sure that was checked. Uh, you can decide to exclude certain files. This is that filtering if you want to filter out Revit models. Uh, we could filter out that right there. If you want to you know, expand this to all of your Revit models, we could filter out all of that. I'm actually going to try to sync some of them, so I'm going to turn that off. Let's go to sync all. And this is where I'm going to sync down to. So I'm setting up a backup here. I'm going to sync all of my files that are shown on this screen down to OneDrive. Now, I've already set up you know, where they're going to be saved. You can actually click into the folder, and it will take you into your uh, Windows folder that it's going to be saved to. You can choose whether to increment um, copy modified new files or if you just want to copy everything. Um, let's go ahead and copy everything here. There is a versioning. Again, we don't. Uh, support versioning on Windows based um, Windows Server or your C drive, so I'm going to leave that off. And delete files not found in source. I like to leave this on. If you have a file that's deleted in um, ACC in your project, you want to make sure that's deleted from OneDrive also. We'll go ahead and make sure that's checked. Okay, again, we can schedule this separately from our main sync, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and just leave it. Again, I don't like to. I like to manually sync my stuff a lot of times. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK, and I'm going to run this. So you see there is a start job. Okay, so now it's running. Now if you have it set up, it does take a little while to, to process depending on your internet connection. Um, if you go to the Activity tab and scroll down, you'll see um, the job has been started. So Sync Job, Autodesk Build. A lot of information here, but it just tells you where it's being saved to, source and destination. Um, and again, it's very easy to understand. That's one of the things that I like most about it. Now, once this is done, there is going to be a log here that says when it was when it was completed. What you can see here, I, I have a log of um, canceled syncs that I went in and tried to do, and then and canceled halfway. When this one's done, it will show up here with all the date. It will tell you exactly how many um, megabyte that you used and um, keep an active log of what you've done. So while that's going, um, you can see over here, I'm going to try to pull this up on my screen. I'm actually going to switch over to Windows Explorer. Okay. So here's the folder. Sure, it's syncing. Now, depending on your sync time, sync times do vary quite a bit. So let's go to backups here. Okay, it's still working on it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to sync down. We should have these three Revit models that I'm going to sync down. This whole folder structure is getting synced down to, um, to OneDrive. Now, I'm... On top of that, what I'm going to show you next is you can also, once it's synced to OneDrive, we can also push it up into another project. So I have a BIM 360 project that I'm going to pull up, and we're going to sync the, the file from um, OneDrive into BIM 360. So you can go, you know, you can sync to all these different uh, file locations depending on um, your workflows. Let's see, start job. Let's make sure it's still running. reading source content, so it's it's still going. So um, while we're talking about that, I'm going to talk a little bit about folder structure. So I'm going to let that sync, or yeah, let that go for a few minutes. Now, uh, document management within Autodesk Build, that's what I'm going to talk to, and this kind of bridges across um, platforms. 
So the big thing when you're either moving your company is thinking about moving from using a server uh, to, to something like Autodesk Build or Procore even, um, a very good thing to review is your folder structure. So how do you want uh, your folder structure to look, what makes sense for your company, and you really want to put some thought into how it's set up because um, that's going to directly impact your efficiency and how people are are interacting with your project. Um, fun story, I work for a smaller company, as I said earlier. Um, all the project managers, we did, saved everything to our server. So, you know, we had um, all individuals kind of going rogue and creating folders on their own. Um, let's see, Bob's folder. Uh, all the project managers had their safe place where they kept documents, which is great. It worked worked fine for the, the time. But, you know, any more you want to standardize, you guys want to um, get everybody on the same page for the standardized format. And that starts with your folder structure. So that's the first thing. Now, everybody's folder structure really differs between, uh, you know, this, this what I'm displaying on my screen right now, we have project files. This is standard. This is something that Autodesk has kind of given us as just a uh, out-of-the-box uh, general contractor folder structure. Now, a lot of people have their own. They're either using, you know, they've been using the same folder structure for a long time, or they don't really know where to start. And that's what this is for. But the more time that you can spend working on a folder structure and thinking through, okay, if I go into construction, what am I going to see here? I'm going to have logistics, models, permitting, um, you know, how do I want to break up my job? And it, it sounds easy when you first say just a folder structure, but really to work with, you know, with your needs, your company's needs, you have to put some pretty serious thought into it. So thinking about folder structure, say you go through, you have a folder structure made, it's standardized, it looks how you want it. Um, the next thing you need to decide within build, and again, this can be applied to pretty much any platform, is permissioning. Who's going to be able to access your folders in files within your project. And this is, um, you know, if you're coming from a smaller company where you're working with your files, you know, a project management file in your on-site server, and everybody has equal e equal um, permission to, to access. If anybody can edit or delete, and you just kind of trust that everybody can handle it. Well, um, the thing is now when we're using Build or we're using Procore, we have the ability to control and have a little bit more control over who can edit and manage files. Again, that's that's what we're looking for. We want to manage our data and make sure nothing's lost. Um, the good news is uh, it's very hard to lose data within Autodesk Build or even Procore for that matter. So here we setting up permissions and thinking through who's going to need access. Do I want everybody to have access? Do maybe some users need to have read-only access and some of them need to be able to upload files? Um, thinking through that's the next step. And this is where uh, another kind of pain point that I see is when you, if you've been working with an on-site server and you're used to just your, your team having access to those files, if you're coming into a program like Build or Procore, you have access to invite other companies to be part and actually see into your folder structure. Now, I get a lot of pushback on, on companies that, you know, we don't want anybody else to see our folder. And that's, you know, that's a, a valid concern. Thing is, we have so much control over permissions now. And if you really think through it, you can plan for that ahead of time. So a lot of times I see companies that will create folders called external or shared and share that out with, uh, you know, subcontractors or anybody else within their project to um, to plan for that ahead of time. And that's a very, very good way to look at it. Um, so planning for that, use leverage the cloud-based technology and be able to share these files instead of having to rely on email or even a Dropbox link to share between teams. They all work, but this is much more controlled. And once you understand it, it 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 makes a lot more sense um, than, than using some other platform. And that's why I think um, if you plan for this ahead of time, your document management will be much better than if you, uh, you know, you stick with what you have, you let everybody have control and you don't standardize, that's where you can get into a lot of problems. That's the biggest pain point that I see um, new clients coming over and, and using ACC Build or so something like Procore. 
Okay, so let's double check them to see if this is synchronized. If not, usually the, the file or the folders are created really quickly. There we go, test project. It should also tell you when your sync is finished. So it might just be too large for my my connection at the moment, which So I'm going to go back. I'm going to do the next sync just so we can see if this pushes up to uh, to BIM 360. So at the same time, I'm also going to click Start Sync. So we're going to see if this one completes any quicker. So these can run simultaneously, but it will um, impact your bandwidth. Now the last thing I'm going to talk about is a little kind of side topic, and this is something I didn't really plan to spend too much time on, but I think it's important um, that, that we discuss it. So say you, you get into either ACC build, you have a folder structure, you think through your permissioning, and you even use file sync. Uh, again, there's a lot of other products you can use for file sync, but the one thing I've noticed with most of them are it's very complicated. And uh, I, I do syncs all the time, and I, I use some of these other products. And they are they give you some other abilities that you don't get with file sync, but it's also much more, um, you know, cumbersome. And there's not many people that can look at what you have set up and understand what's going on. So um, that that's a big big thing for me. Now the next thing, the next step after you say you get into uh, you get your folder structure set, you have file sync working, uh, you have everything backed up, scheduled, so forth. The next thing that a lot of people do not um, use or know about, and this is becoming a bigger thing, is Autodesk Platform Services. Now, this isn't for everybody. This is an advanced um, topic. So if you guys are you know, new to um, any of this, take some time. I would advise you guys just to um, Google Autodesk Platform Services and you can go through these tutorials. And these tutorials, I've done them. I'm not a... Um, software engineer, uh, I find it fascinating, but I was able to follow these tutorials and try these out. They're very well documented and you can actually create some. Um, now, when I say Autodesk platform services for the, for those that haven't heard of this, this is building, you know, custom applications or custom, um, Autodesk integrations for your team. Now this, again, this is not for everybody. This is advanced, but um, start with these tutorials and just try them out. They're, they're very easy to understand, even if you've never done this before. I actually did the ACC administrator one. I found it fascinating. There is so much that shows you what you can do beyond just what Autodesk gives you. And this is one of the, the best things I've seen Autodesk put out is because it walks you through step by step. Anybody can use these and modify um, like this, what we're seeing on my screen right now. This is a custom dashboard that you can manage projects and project information from using uh, Autodesk platform services. And um, again, it's, it's becoming more of a um, mainstream thing. There's actually a ton of people that have jumped into um, Autodesk platform services and is looking at using APIs and more of the advanced stuff. But if you are interested in something like that, I would advise you guys to at least try this out. Um, look through the, the different tutorials and see what you can do. Because I, again, I tried this out. I actually built uh, a little app to, to help me do some stuff in-house. It, it was um, eye-opening. It really was. So I'd like to just highlight that. Now, the last thing here, let me jump back, check one more time, make sure our sync didn't. Check my activity log. Okay, it's still going. I, I guess it's just my internet connection. I've tried this a couple times today. I haven't had any issues. But um, last thing I'll go over, I'm going to touch up just a little bit on this. Let's go through where you can try out um, file sync. So you can download from either the Gray Tech Advantage or the Autodesk App Store. Uh, there is going to be a, a free trial that you can activate. And it does have a, a limit on of one gig uh, that you can sync across three projects. 
with a minimum um, of 25 files to allow you to, to test out the product and see if it really is it, it, everything that you hope it will be. Um, I would please go ahead and try these. Um, this is a, a great thing to be able to, to try out. Um, there is additional help documentation. If you click on, um, there is a specific help file. If I click on this in the, the description, it will open it up. Very well documented. I like how clean it is. Um, you can go through and it's very good instruction on you know, what the different parts of file sync are and you know any questions you have, um, you can look through here. So very good documentation. Um, there's also, let me go back to our help document. There's also YouTube videos that demonstrate, you know, how to how to go through setting setting up a connection and uh, creating those first syncs. So I uh, recommend using those. They're very very helpful. And that's going to pretty much wrap up my presentation. Uh, it, are there Missy? Are there any questions or? Uh, all right, let's take a look. Thank you so much, Aaron. And I did put on the screen as you were talking about it, the free trial for Gray Tech File Sync. You guys can literally just click right on the screen. Um, and I'll check to see if we've got any questions. Um, as of now, we don't have any questions, but if you guys think of any questions after the webinar, you can email me at mscott at asti.com. I did put that in the chat for you guys. Um, also, do we want to bring up the Black Friday promo that we have going on for file sync? Oh, yes. Um, let's see, 10%, 10% off, I believe. Sure. Yep, and I have added that on the screen for you guys as well. We've got 10% off of file sync. So not only can you get a free trial, but then you can also get 10% off. So it's a win-win. Totally take advantage of that. Um, and any final words, anything you want to say to wrap it up for today, Aaron? Uh, guys, I really appreciate it. Um, I think, you know, thinking through the stuff we talked about today, just thinking through your project structure and planning out your backup and keeping things simple, I think is the big takeaway. And uh, I really appreciate everybody taking the time to, to sit in and, and uh, learn a little bit about file sync. Awesome. I love it. Thank you all for joining us today. I hope it was meaningful and impactful for you and your businesses. And thank you so much, Aaron. We look forward to seeing you all on future webinars. Have a great day. Thank you.